about our series on suspensions, we have put out the statement that pharmaceutical suspensions are inherently unstable. But what has sedimentation to do with the instability of suspensions? In today's video, we will answer this question. But before diving in, I want to thank you for the support you give. We do really appreciate it and that what keeps us going. If this is your first time here, welcome to the family. Hope you enjoy moving around exploring our content. And if you are already a family member, welcome back. Now without any further ado, let's get started. Well, particles in a suspension would be suspended for a while. But normally, and due to the effect of gravity, they will settle down towards the bottom of whatever container they are in. If that happens at a slow rate, larger particles will sediment first, then smaller ones, and so on. The smaller ones will occupy the space between the larger ones. And if we had a closer look to the sediment, we will find that particles at the top, as a result of their compression to the particles on the bottom, particles will be very close to each other. Remember, in our last video, we have talked about how proximity can lead to the very serious problem, which we termed caking, which simply means that particles interact irreversibly with each other making it impossible for the sediment to be redispersed again upon shaking. If you would like further details about this phenomena, please refer to our last video. I will put the link to that video in the description box for you. Now let's look to another scenario. Let's take the other way around, experiencing fast sedimentation rate. If the sedimentation rate is fast, relatively fast, particles will not have the chance to have that close interaction between each other. They will not cake, but rather they will form flocules which will be easily redispersed upon gentle shaking, meaning that accurate doses can be much easier taken from this type of suspensions. This is referred to as secondary minimum interaction result. So does that mean it's favorable to have fast sedimentation rate? Well of course we don't mean very fast sedimentation to the extent that even a dose cannot be taken but relatively fast sedimentation is better Remember in our last video we spoke about controlled flocculation through which we can engineer particles to reside in the secondary minimum, right? Well, one way of doing this is through controlling sedimentation as we saw. And we can do that by a number of approaches. They can be all found in a stock's law of sedimentation which is appearing on the screen now. Increasing particle size will increase the sedimentation rate and that can be a way to control flocculation. So having relatively large uniformly sized particles can really be a key in having pharmaceutically acceptable suspension formulations. Densities are also something to look at but generally water is used in pharmaceutical suspensions so this is not a commonly encountered factor to consider actually. On the other hand viscosity is a common one. Increasing viscosity will decrease the sedimentation rate so by manipulating the viscosity of the formulation we can have the sufficient time to take the dose but not too long time that can lead to slow sedimentation and the mess that comes with that. Now we're left only with the gravity and this is something we cannot control. So the main factors we can play with to control 
sedimentation, according to Stokes' law, are the particle size, the densities of the uh, suspended particles and the suspension medium, and finally the viscosity of the formulation. This is it for today. If you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends you know who are interested in this topic. And as always, stay fabulous wherever you are.